I'm in total shock, a video game company CEO talking about charging more money for video games. I cannot believe it. This is coming from the boss of Embracer Group, and if you're not familiar with them, it's the conglomerate who are buying up basically any IP, any studio, any dev team that they could get their hands on for a while. They own, like, Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, I think they're making all of the Lord of the Rings video games. They were doing all of that, and then it went totally pear-shaped. They were relying on a word-of-mouth deal from a Saudi Arabian company, and then it fell apart at the last minute. Embracer Group started scrounging around for money. They were shutting down every team. Saints Row Studio was shut down. They probably deserved it, though, but it's pretty much all been going downhill for them. I don't even think Embracer actually exists anymore. They've split into three different entities, probably for tax reasons. One of them's called Middle Earth Enterprises and Friends, which sounds ridiculous, so I'm not even going to bother using those names. I'm just going to stick to Embracer. That's a little bit easier. But this Lars clown, he's been chatting to his team, apparently. He said this in an interview, by the way, so he's talking to the general public. He, he fails to read the room sometimes, I think, because it's not like he's just talking internally to his accountants. He's telling us this. He's telling us he wants to increase the price of video games beyond $70. And he says it's something that we've been discussing. Now, it's all the more ridiculous because I cannot think of a single Embracer group game that is even worth today's price of $70 for the base game, let alone more money, $80, $90 or something like that. So I'm not sure why this is coming from him. He may have done better to actually release a must-play title, their version of a, an Elden Ring or something, so that we actually think, yeah, well, you know, maybe that could be worth more money. They haven't produced anything like that, so it, it sounds stupid. Normally, I wouldn't care about something like this either. Game company, CEO, again, being greedy, wants more profits, who cares? But unfortunately, in these industries now, when one company does something anti-consumer and has success with it, every other company follows suit. If we think of car manufacturers, for instance, they started doing subscriptions. You've got to pay whatever, $50, $100 a month to use certain features in your car. As soon as one company got away with it, they all followed suit. The Toyotas, the Ford started to try and charge money for stuff on a subscription service as well. So it worries me because we saw this in games not that long ago at the start of the generation. As soon as games went from $60 to $70, then every other company jumped on the bandwagon immediately. Now it's accepted. Games, AAA games, will be $70 all the time. And I will actually say this, if games were $70 right now, but they were always getting better, games were improving, we were genuinely getting better and better content, the games were complete, they're polished, they don't run like crap on PC all of the time. If that was the case, if it was fantastic, the experience for $70, I'd accept that. I'd be okay with it because games, they used to be expensive in the 90s. They were like $60 then. All the inflation and everything, now they're, what, $70. It's not the biggest increase in the world. I'd be all right. But unfortunately, that's not the case. It feels like the game experience, if anything, it has gotten worse. It's gone backwards. Plus, games are more expensive. And it's not even to say that games really are $70 right now. That's really buying into it. That's like the base price the game company kind of frowns on you, spits on you when you only pay that. They're sort of saying, no, well, that, that's to get in the door. But now you should be buying the season pass. You've got to buy these skins, all the microtransactions, DLC. That's what it is. So you talk about increasing the price from $70 to, to something like $80, $90, and that's it. Now we're going to give you the full game. That's not what's going to happen. None of these anti-consumer practices are ever going to go away. The deluxe editions, the microtransactions. So if you're increasing the base price of the game, everything's going to go up. It's going to get very expensive to have the complete experience. If we look at what he actually said, so again, this was in an interview, he starts off saying, I'm not saying that you can't increase the price of games, but the reality is no one has tried it yet. If you create an enormous role-playing game, for example, with 100 or 150 hours of gameplay, very polished and a unique experience, would the consumer be willing to pay more? Now, a few things with this. Starting off, they have increased the price already, so that $70 was not that long ago. What I think is happening here, sadly, I can see it 
from their perspective, I don't agree with it, but what they're probably thinking is they increased the price from 60 to 70 before there was really a whole heap of inflation. That kind of started after that, where things have just gotten really expensive day to day. So they put the price up, then inflation happens, and they're thinking, oh, we, we didn't really reap the benefits. Now we're basically just getting what we got before because of what the dollar is worth. So they're thinking, now we've got to increase it again to really reap the rewards of what we were trying to get in the first place when we went up to $70. We've got to get to $80, $90 per game. When he talks about creating an enormous role-playing game, for example, with 100, 150 hours of gameplay, First of all, the idiots in Embracer, I don't know about the individual studios, maybe there's some solid ones, but at least the executives at Embracer, they have not greenlit an RPG that is like this, an incredible role-playing game with 100 hours of gameplay. That hasn't happened. And I also wonder if you're talking about increasing prices and the amount of hours on the game is kind of the benchmark, that is questionable because... What is that going to mean? I'm just going to think the worst, which is, oh, well, you're just going to pad a game out and then use that justification. Oh, it's a long game, so we can charge more money for it. What am I going to get out of that? Is it going to actually be like 15 hours of genuine, unique content, but then you're just going to put padding, heaps of grinding, copy and pasted content like your average Ubisoft game? Is that how you're going to reach 100 hours? If so, it's just more bullshit. Very polished. Well, give me an example of a game that is like that, that genuinely feels polished, because that seems like a, a pipe dream for gamers at the moment, that you actually play something that feels finished. It's not riddled with bugs, performance issues, especially on PC. So if that's another benchmark, that sounds unrealistic at the moment for your teams. And a unique experience. Not many of them at the moment. Would the consumer be willing to pay more? Well, this all sounds fine, but you've given three examples of things that don't really happen in AAA. And I don't believe that if you increase the base price by $10 or $20, that that would really change things. It sounds like, and a lot of these game companies seem to use this argument, they might not outright say it, but they imply it, that, oh, well, games, are, they're too cheap now, again, because of inflation, so therefore it's too hard to give you this quality experience. Gamers are just cheap, they're not willing to pay. That sort of dialogue has come out before, again, it's it's been implied, but I don't really believe that if you increase the base price a little bit, you'd be content with that. Again, you're still going to do the microtransactions. You're still going to do everything else. The truth is, really, you're happy to keep the prices a little bit lower than maybe they could be to get access to the game because you want to sell everyone on these extras. You know, it's much easier to target whales with a million skins than to try and get an extra $10 out of absolutely everyone. This is a business strategy. It's more profitable for you to do things the way you're currently doing them than to increase prices. You know that. You can talk about this in an interview. Unique experience. Maybe gamers would pay more. It, it just sounds stupid. We've had these games, the Baldur's Gate 3s, the Elden Rings. I'd be willing to bet that a lot of people who've enjoyed these games probably would actually pay more. I mean, the Elden Ring DLC... It's going to be quite expensive compared to other DLCs. I'd probably call it more of an expansion given what we have to compare it to, but still pretty expensive for post-launch game content, essentially. I think a lot of people are happily going to pay it. You're not going to see that much criticism for the price because they actually are releasing something of quality. Embracer Group knows if they did the same thing, no one in their right mind would buy it because what you release is slop, basically. It's mostly bargain bin rubbish. And he goes on to say, it's something we've been discussing, but we are currently sticking to the practice of the industry. Would it be that one company one day tries to increase pricing? That remains to be seen. So kind of saying that if an EA came out and said, hey, we've got our new live service or whatever game, and we're going to charge an extra $10 for it. He's just basically waiting for that day and when that happens that's when they'd increase prices and again it's because all the Embracer studios everything they do is kind of following they're not innovating they're not producing anything of any real quality at least at the moment so they know they've got to be followers they've got to wait for a studio to produce something people actually want then maybe prices will go up that studio will put the price up because they've made a must-play game 
that's the time Embracer can jump in and do the same. So it it sounds almost like a cry for help from the studio. We're hemorrhaging money. We're struggling. Come on, someone else put the price up so we can justify it and get away with it. Because if we did that today, if we made our games $90, no one would buy them. People are barely buying our games right now as it is. I think the industry is facing the same problem as all other industries, with inflation and rising costs of game development, Winger Force added. And it's been hard to increase pricing in premium PC console. I don't believe that because of all of the increased monetization. Again, the reason you do it this way, the, we can say, low base price, at least compared to maybe games 20 years ago, it's because of all the extra money you're getting from all of the extras. You want to make it easy buy-in so that the whales give something a chance and then they're going to spend more and more money. It's more profitable for you, so I'm not sure why you're whinging about this. And I've always thought about this, this rising costs of game development excuse. People are starting to wake up to that. Most of the increased costs are coming from things like graphics, animation, all that stuff. It's not like the game we're actually playing, the gameplay has improved in any way. If I go back and play the original Deus Ex, I can't think of too many games released after that that are actually more in depth in terms of what's possible for you as the player. Most of these games are way more streamlined because you've spent all the money on the graphics and creativity goes out the window because you're so focused on making a game that anyone could enjoy. It appeals to apparently everyone because you've got to make all the money in the world because if you're massive budget, Creativity is basically gone. Most of the things, we look at like the new Hellblade game, animations, character model faces, all of that. No one really cares. We just want a great game. I've always thought that Elden Ring, at least to me, if I, I'm truly honest, it felt like most of the art and most of what was going on, it kind of felt like a lot of reused Dark Souls 3 stuff. It didn't matter because the actual game was fun to play and I think they got the most out of what felt like maybe reused assets. They repurposed stuff and it felt unique. That to me is totally fine. I would much rather that these studios, they maybe take a game that they released two years ago, reuse some stuff, put it in a new package creatively so it's actually a fun new game but it doesn't cost a mountain worth of gold to actually make. And then they just release something more regularly. That way you're actually making games in a reasonable time frame and, and maybe your company's not collapsing like it seems to be doing right now. The rising costs, like we've seen Nintendo seemingly get it right. They release games pretty regularly. And I've seen interviews from like 10, 15 years ago that are starting to pop up now with Nintendo where they predicted this and they were saying, hey, game development's getting out of hand. Maybe instead of focusing on technological innovations, making sure Digital Foundry are giving our game a good review in terms of graphics. We actually just focus on making a fun game. The industry's lost that outside of the indie scene. And to me, it's always seemed like a lot of these big companies, they know their only point of difference is graphics, the actual games themselves, the gameplay. It's mediocre, there's nothing special about it. And if you compare the gameplay of their AAA game to some indie two-man team game, there's actually not a, a huge difference in quality. The only point of difference AAA companies have is the graphics and presentation. And that's why they've tried to market that to the masses over the years. Wow, look how good it looks. Look at these visuals. Because they know that's really their selling point. So they love to push that because it's the only way that they're actually going to get sales if people are duped into thinking that's what makes a good game, purely the presentation. He continues and says, the pricing of those products, these games, has been the same for many years, which means that the margin to succeed is less, and on top of that, there is a higher cost of capital. Ultimately, when you make big investments or games, you need to play with teams you are very confident in, or with IPs you own or control and have the full financial income. Well, I don't believe this. I mean, you cancel the Deus Ex game, for instance. Cyberpunk 2077 sold a fuckload of copies. It's successful. They also fixed the game. It's got a pretty positive reception now. You could have done something maybe half as good with Deus Ex, and that would have been okay. Some sort of immersive sim. Maybe it has some cyberpunk influence to sort of capture that market again. You could have done that. Instead, you cancelled it, 
and you're making some weird Lord of the Rings in the Shire game that no one looks interested in at all. So the decisions they make, they don't seem like good ones. So it's hard to have sympathy, all our margins, all this. You don't seem to release very good products. And again, it's your choice to have these inflated budgets. You could try and make some smaller games or, or repurpose assets. You look at Capcom. If you look at even Sega, I, I see people talk about the Yakuza series. Very similar, reusing assets, but still making new games. Resident Evil, they release quite regularly because they don't try and overdo it. They just release a, a good, positive game. It works. They get it out there and people stay interested in the series because... An entry's not releasing every 10 years, basically, and then you've got to bring a whole new audience into it because the old audience has grown up and doesn't care about it anymore. On top of that, the consumers have more content than ever to choose from. They love to engage in established IPs they've been playing before, which means it's harder to have them trying out new things or new IPs. How many new IPs have you tried? You bought up a whole bunch of old dead ones that not a whole lot of people cared about, and then you say, oh, no one cares about these Exactly, because you bought the company that had that IP to begin with that was floundering or just about dead because no one was interested. Try working on something that people actually want. Again, Deus Ex, you killed that. That is an IP people want, not some old obscure useless one that had one entry that failed 25 years ago. Do something good. It's just something we're all facing in a reality which we have been adapting to over the past year and we'll continue to adapt to that reality. I don't know, everything seems to go bad for this organisation. No one seems Seems to care about them anymore. I was intrigued when they were buying everything up. I kind of was coping. I thought, wow, there must be a method to their madness. There, there wasn't any. They were just fools. We'll see what they do from here. Again, thinking of just the wider industry, I don't think these seven, eight year dev cycles are going to work. They've got to look at Nintendo and just go, let's focus on fun. Let's stop focusing on presentation, all of that ridiculousness. I also think people with the monetization side of things, we've seen in the last year or so, if you release a quality game, people will buy it. And if you have the nonsense in it, if you have the microtransaction store pay to win, people are actually turned off the moment that they see it. Dragon's Dogma 2, we all know that the microtransactions weren't actually that bad, but just having them in the first place, people immediately thought the worst, understandably. And I don't think that that game actually did that well. It could have done a lot better. So good PR, good word of mouth will make your game a success, but that means you have to actually do good things for gamers. Get that good PR by just releasing a quality product without the bullshit. The industry is also much bigger now. So even though games used to be more expensive, there was a much smaller pool of people actually buying them. You release it today and it's an incredible game. Even at $70, you're going to make a fuck ton more money than you used to. So just make it a good product. Do the opposite of what this guy says. He seems to get everything wrong. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.